How David Ogilvy wrote world-class copy. I study the greats. People who've pioneered marketing and selling are an endless source of inspiration to me, and I aim to be one of the luminaries of online marketing as a result of my idolation of these great men. Take, for instance, David Ogilvy. He was one of the original and greatest ad men. In 1948, he started what would eventually be known as Ogilvy and Mather, the Manhattan-based advertising agency that has since been responsible for some of the world's most iconic ad campaigns. And in 1963, he even wrote Confessions of an Advertising Man, the best-selling book that is still to this day considered essential reading for all who enter the industry. Time magazine called him the most sought-after wizard in today's advertising industry in the early 60s. His name and that of his agency have been mentioned more than once in Mad Men for good reason. With all that in mind, being able to learn his writing routine when producing the very ads that made his name is an invaluable opportunity. This fascinating letter, written by Ogilvy in 1955 to a Mr. Ray Colt, offers exactly that. April 19th, 1955. Dear Mr. Colt, On March 22nd, you wrote to me asking for some notes on my work habits as a copywriter. They are appalling, as you're about to see. Number one, I have never written an advertisement in the office. Too many interruptions. I do all my writing at home. Number two, I spend a long time studying the precedents. I look at every advertisement which has appeared for competing products during the past 20 years. Number three, I am helpless without research material, and the more motivational, the better. Number four, I write out a definition of the problem and a statement of the purpose which I wish the campaign to achieve. Then I go no further until the statement and its principles have been accepted by the client. Number five, before actually writing the copy, I write down every conceivable fact and selling idea. Then I get them organized and relate them to research and the copy platform. Number six, then I write the headline. As a matter of fact, I try to write 20 alternative headlines for every advertisement. And I never select the final headline without asking the opinion of other people in the agency. In some cases, I seek the help of the research department and get them to do a split run on a battery of headlines. Number seven, at this point, I can no longer postpone the actual copy. So I go home and sit down at my desk. I find myself entirely without ideas. I get bad tempered. If my wife comes into the room, I growl at her. This has gotten worse since I gave up smoking. Number eight, I am terrified of producing a lousy advertisement. This causes me to throw away the first 20 attempts. Number nine, if all else fails, I drink a half a bottle of rum and play a handle oratorio on the gramophone. This generally produces an uncontrollable gush of copy. Number ten, the next morning I get up early and edit the gush. Number 11, then I take the train to New York and my secretary types a draft. I cannot type, which is very inconvenient. Number 9, I am a lousy copywriter, but I am a good editor. So, I go to work editing my own draft. After four or five editings, it looks good enough to show the client. If the client changes the copy, I get angry, because I took a lot of trouble writing it, and what I wrote, I wrote on purpose. Altogether, it is a slow and laborious business. I understand that some copywriters have a much greater facility. Yours sincerely, D.O.